Right, so I'd like to try something new. Joe, would you be able to share the agenda? Because it's quite hard for me to take notes while I'm also sharing my screen. Sure. Thank you. Can you all see that? Um, could be a bit bigger. For sure. Yeah, my, my, we don't oh, use the old this. word, so my aged eyes need a little bigger. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I'm guessing you have a big screen, whereas I'm just looking at it on a 15 inch laptop. Gotcha. Okay. So, I mean, we always start with reviewing the topics. Um, I know some of you have already had a look at this, but um, I think Mark or Tim, or Evaristo, any of you have any topics you'd like to add? No, just, like no, just wanted to see how it's getting on. Okay. Yeah, same for me. Okay. So there don't seem to be any new participants today. As I can see, uh, do you know everybody, Tim, or would you like an introduction? Because obviously most of us are, know each other because we work at Cloudbees together, but uh, maybe a quick round. No, I've met everyone, I think. Okay. Great. So, um, in that case, I think we can just go straight ahead to point three, which is an update on how things are going. So Felix has been working, well, Felix seems to be heading to the door, but <laughs> Felix has been working pretty hard on uh, getting some uh, of the actual UI changes into the product. So I think it would be nice if Felix could give a little update on progress of the changes he's been making, what he's run into. Um, Joe will also be giving a bit of an update on sort of the intention behind the work and what's coming next. So you ready to go, Felix? Sure. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, I will be sharing my screen now. Here, I'll stop sharing first. Maybe you should be able to. Okay. You see my screen with the actual Jenkins? Yes. Okay, great. great. Um, so you can see here uh, that this is basically the, uh, this is the, our current development version of the new Jenkins, uh, of the Jenkins UI with a new header and the new breadcrumbs bar. So yeah, it's mostly uh, reflected on the updated designs by on, the, on this document that uh, Joe will talk about in a minute. So yeah. This is mostly what you can expect. It's, it's almost there. We are missing a few state hover states for some elements, finishing up some touches. But I think it's, uh, the end result was rather nice. Uh, yeah, the, I think the activity monitor, monitor looks looks good. Maybe indication. Um, yeah, also the search menu is a bit more modern right now. And yeah, well, I, I'll be talking later about the one, one part where I had some difficulties were the breadcrumbs, because we did, we had some designs that with the, where the breadcrumbs would be separated by slashes and the current page would be half a different color. But the way the breadcrumbs are set and programmed into Jenkins makes it really difficult. So I don't know what to do about that. I will probably talk about this in a, in a thread on the Google Developers Group. So yeah, this is it. Uh, if you're curious, we can you can see how it behaves on, on mobile. As you can see on tablet screens, these uh, yeah these uh, these icons remove the the name and the action name is hidden. And on mobile, it hides the search bar. The search bar. Okay, that's nice. And yeah, uh, so yeah, this is it. I mean, this is not the biggest change. But I think it makes quite. Uh, I think it's quite visually pleasant, and w w we found that it doesn't really clash clash too much with the rest of the UI. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, does anybody has any question about this? Mm -hmm. 
Um, are there any other changes planned for the UI as first steps? Or do you plan to deliver only the header in the first page? So we will be, del be del delivering this, uh, the PR I will be creating hopefully then uh, this uh, mm -hmm. on Friday or, or next week will be the header and the breadcrumbs as well. Yeah, so one problem is that, is that uh, Jenkins has uh, a color scheme and mm -hmm. uh, what you change uh, doesn't map the color scheme on uh, other pages. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why I was uh, wondering uh, whether it would really fit. Um, well, I can create a PR for, do you mean for the plugin site and for the... Mm, plugin for... site is uh, less of a problem. Uh, I would rather worry about uh, other pages. Do we have an inventory of sites for, for that problem? I mean, we can definitely talk about, talk about this if, if everybody's happy with this color scheme. Maybe we can do up, we can have a plan to update the color scheme for the other sites by the time the next LTS, for example, is released. Mm -hmm. okay. so what is the color scheme? I mean, is it an actual document? So mm, yeah, I can find it out. It was somewhere though, not under the trivial location. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, just changing a header uh, will be a big problem. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe we can... Well, I, I was going to talk later about uh, mm -hmm. how we can go about releasing these changes. Maybe we can talk about this in after Joe's presentation. But basically, what, um, what I want to mention is... Well, what I think about what you said is that I suggest we go with it because we are going to be changing more stuff, maybe typography or maybe maybe everything, and then we can update all the other sites at once, once we have updated uh, typography, color scheme, or everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, in order to do that, it would be nice uh, to have a vision of this color scheme and whatever before we start merging changes so that uh, we can uh, review them together. Um, yeah. So what, what did you propose here? Uh, well, my proposal here? would be to have maybe a set of reference screens, uh, which would uh, represent uh, the new UI you want mm -hmm. to deliver, and uh, to actually get it uh, through broader community review. For example, uh, propose it in the developer mailing list with some sketches, and we can start from there. So if there is a consensus that uh, it's uh, the UI we would like to deliver, then why not? So you mean we? So you're suggesting we? Are you suggesting that we create full mockups for some some key pages? Yes. Right now. Uh, it would be my proposal because yeah, I see this header. Yeah, it uh, definitely changes. But uh, even here, I can ask why do we have uh, Jenkins text and the Jenkins text uh, on the laptop uh, angle, which uh, looks quite strange. Uh, yeah, I understand that so, uh, that's how a break, break cramp work and that is, it's extensible. Uh, but as yes, a common user, uh, it uh, yeah. would be nice to uh, so, understand where we are going. So, Ole, uh, just to kind of respond to that idea of creating full screen mockups for the experience, I think it, it might actually do more damage than, than, than be beneficial. And the reason for that is because it's just too early to, it would be a bit presumptuous to um, try and design all of these different elements on any given screen. We're going out at this really cautiously. So I don't, I don't think it would be the right move to, and incrementally, right, intentionally. I don't think it would be the right move to design full screens and send them out for approval. I think this call and our Slack channel are sort of the forum for, for discussing mm -hmm. these things. Um, so rather than creating those additional Mm -hmm. mocks and putting them out there. I think, I think this, this call and, and like I said, Slack are, are where we should talk about them. So like that Jenkins mm -hmm. and Jenkins thing, if that feels weird, that's great um, feedback. And let's talk about that in Slack rather than creating a, a new process. Um, no, well, that, it's you know? not a new process. Uh, it's okay. So maybe this is a, a process I'm not familiar with. Well, uh, basically just uh, to have a complete proposal because yeah, if you submit uh, this change uh, for the header, yeah, it's fine, we can uh, vote for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, for example, I don't understand where it's going. And uh, if you expect me to approve it, uh, I won't approve it. So I'm happy to be outvoted in the pull request. 
but uh, I wouldn't vote for that in the current state. Okay. Uh, so Web UI is important, and uh, I would really like to understand uh, why we want to get this, the changes. Sure. So I, I'm, I'm curious to learn a little more about this and sort of what um, what would get you there, like as far as far as like uh, how much detail do you actually are you seeking? Because I, I don't think it I don't think that we could provide an accurate representation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could, I could make full screen mocks, you know, no problem there, but I don't think that they'll necessarily be an accurate representation mm -hmm. of what we could achieve. They could show maybe what we want to achieve, but they're not going to be, things are going to change, you know, as we, as we work toward it, a proper design system in the long term. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be providing you with things to review that are going to, that are not just going to be an accurate representation. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe there's a... Maybe I'm confused, but uh, Oleg, were you referring to mockups of the whole new design or just of how the new header would look like on another page? Um, for me, it's uh, rather several pages, but with uh, new design. So currently we changed only the header, but everything else on this page is uh, the same as it used to be before. So you don't yeah. like the fact that you don't know where it's going, basically. Exactly. Um, yeah, I no no one how... no one likes that, right? But it can't it can't all be designed in bulk that way. And while physically I could definitely design that for you, the thing you would be approving wouldn't be accurate. Okay, um, it's just uh, too early. Okay, then uh, the question: Why does it have to go to the Jenkins core? Because uh, we can have a separate theme, um, and we can integrate it to one service theme is complete? Uh, because, well, I don't think we can do it as, uh, as a theme exactly because it mm -hmm. requires some actual markup changes. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, markup changes is something we can start doing. Uh, so mm -hmm. if markup changes... Yeah, are... th that's something we, I wanted to touch later, which is how, mm -hmm. how do we go with releasing this? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, we, uh, we, yeah, we have talked before about that we could use uh, feature flags when necessary. So maybe we can, maybe you, 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 well, the community would prefer that we release these changes instead of straight to core uh, behind the feature flag or whatever, so that the users can talk along of the new uh, UI. Yeah, if we could do that, it would be nice. If we were talking but what about would, I mean, it's some kind of compromise we can reach, because I mean, I, I, I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying, Oleg. I mean, I'm also, I'll be honest, I also don't know where this is going well enough. I mean, I like what I see so far, but it's, you know, it's like 2% of the Jenkins UI. Um, I don't think it's particularly healthy for Joe to make high fidelity mockups of, you know, 90% of the Jenkins UI. But so how can we find some kind of middle ground where we have a better idea of where we're going with, you know, flexibility to make enough changes that, you know, yeah. we're not designing everything up front. Yeah, for me, it would be nice to just have, uh, let's say, three pages. One is front page of Jenkins. This may be uh, some jobs, some folders, which is a common case. Then a page for a job and a page for a build. So these are three main pages which have been visited by Jenkins users. If we could uh, have understanding how it would look like for them, I would be totally happy. I don't nope. really care about uh, configuration pages because, well, uh, we go towards configuration as code. I don't care about other peripheral pages, but if we have a vision for these uh, uh, common cases, I think it would be a great start. Can you please repeat what three pages? Was Home it? page, page of a build, page of a job, was it? Yeah. Well, yeah maybe also build log if you consider doing changes to that. So I don't think that's entirely unreasonable, right? It's just the thing to remember is that it all comes with a huge asterisk mark, which is to say that the design will change from whatever I'm providing for you. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's that's fine. I don't want to commit to to when I could provide that for the SIG just yet. So let me figure that out, and I'll I'll post an update in Slack. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think I think there's a middle ground to achieve there. Let's let's figure it out. Um, yeah. Okay. For me, feature flag proposed by Felix would be totally fine because yeah. I believe we have a consensus that we want to change the design. 
Yeah, uh, we we wanted to avoid the feature flags as much as possible to the to the less, less number of features as possible because they, it definitely makes everything harder, you know. Uh, but yeah, maybe if 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 you do believe that the, if they are necessary for this first step, sure. Um, but what I will what I will be doing is probably I don't have enough knowledge of the Jenkins Java side basically to say so to speak. So I'll probably be requesting some pointers from the community, maybe to how do you, how do you prefer it? Maybe as a, um, maybe mm -hmm. uh, for example, do you would you prefer a toggle a toggle switch on and off through the configuration panel at runtime? Do you want to to set it up as a startup flag when running the binary compile time flag? You know, there are several mm -hmm. options. So maybe yeah, we can talk about this is uh, something we can take offline. Okay. Uh, Oli, uh, also, well, Yuli, I, th I think you joined late. Uh, this is basically the new header we, we, we've been developing. Um, yeah. Uli, uh, Uli, Tim, do you, do, do you have any thoughts on what we just discussed? <clears throat> yeah, I just followed the discussion, so it's just fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd also like to welcome Angelique Jard, who also has joined oh, late. I didn't know this. She joined. Hi. Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm here. I'm just listening. <laughs> okay. I'm, okay, I'm well, looking and listening. Yes. Yeah, Hello. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, also, some changes could be actually delivered incrementally. So, for example, if you want to just uh, land this notification bar, I believe it's something we could do right away because it's definitely better than the current layout. So, the problems start with color changes, with styling changes. Uh, because uh, there is a lot of uh, users customizing it using simple theme plugin. And if we just break the layout uh, to add a new header without UI revamp, it might have a lot of issues downstream. So mm -hmm. do, you, do you understand you correctly that maybe I could upload uh, on the PR what I create? I don't put behind the feature flag the new UI layout, mm -hmm. which is with the, current, with the former colors, with the black bar and stuff. And then I create behind the feature flag the new colors. Uh, yeah, it's one of the ways. Uh, but yeah, yeah, maybe I wasn't specific enough. Uh, so this uh, top panel, which you change, basically it consists of a number of controls. Uh, but what companies usually change is uh, the logo on the top left and mm -hmm. the color of the bar. So it's pretty common to replace it. So as long as we retain compatibility there and uh, maybe keep look and feel uh, the same, the rest of the mm -hmm. components uh, can be modified. So if you want to modify bread crumb bar, I don't see any issues with that. If you want to modify notifications layout, I also do not see issues there. Okay, so you're saying mm -hmm. that the, the problematic part is the, is the, the logo and company name. Mm. Well, and, and I'm I'm, really impressed actually by the the way you've improved the experience for the user on narrow screens the collapsing of that admin user and that logout that's really nice boy i'd like to have that sooner rather than later <laughs> that, that's really nice and i don't see any reason for a feature flag for that that's not a commonly customized thing nice work mm -hmm. oh, thank you appreciate so, it uh i look into that all like, definitely Yep. Um, now, technical ways, I would like to mention one thing uh, before moving on, uh, which is that uh, we did receive some feedback from the community, especially from Yuli. Thank you for that. And for example, I, we, I, I'll be maybe you'll be surprised that I'm adding, uh, adding new modern front end techniques when by the time I create the PR. For example, I'm using a new way to adding icons, which will enable us to use the whole suite of material icons. Uh, yeah, that, that's a heads up. Uh, you 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 can expect that maybe some things will your attention when mm -hmm. catch your attention when by the time the PR plans. But I will be working on that. Uh, so if nobody has more questions about this, I yeah, uh, Joe, you can go ahead. I've I've got one. I'm not yes, I'm not sure if question or suggestion, but. Uh, what do you think about the enabler to refresh uh, link or button or whatever? Because when you stress the theme, it's weird because I think it doesn't. It's currently almost the, the same behavior as now. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to touch it that much, and the reason for that was it's probably going away, so I, do, I did not want to compromise basically the most layout for something that it it's not many as for from what I saw, many teams actually disabled it. Okay. And hide yeah, it. yeah. I, I, in my opinion, I would uh, move it away. So if that's what's planned. Uh, yeah, I mean, discussed it uh, in the community. So there was yeah, a yeah. developer mm -hmm. interest about that. Yeah, it was really weird because some plugins with a thousand stalls are actually hooking up to this div and doing some weird things, positioning them sort of there. But I, that's why I didn't also want to touch it that much. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. So I will stop sharing then. Uh, you can you can resume sh sharing. Mm -hmm. You resume sharing, chat, please. So I can keep taking notes. Okay, no problem. Thank you. One thing to keep in mind regarding uh, the icon management, uh, this just caught my attention. Uh, mm. We have a history of introducing new framework for icon management. You can take a look at icon shim library and the icon shim plugin. Uh, so yeah, it's not, not the engine I propose, but we already have an engine for managing icons and it might be compatible with what you consider doing. Okay, I'm, I'm just using SVG sprites and taking the SVG sprites straight out of material is just a way of using just the whole material suite of icons, but Joe can, can talk about it. We basically will be trying to use material icons as, more, as much as possible. It's, sometimes we will need a specific icons. And the reason I wanted to go with full material icons and a standard way and a, the standard material icon suite is that Anybody can go, choose the material icon they want, put just and import it like that. I will create a... Yeah, but uh, one thing, uh, so yeah. if you use standard library, will it be downloaded from the internet or will it be bundled as a resource? Uh, because... You can actually download the, uh, the, the SVG symbol mm -hmm. files and put them inside as, a, as an asset, basically. Yeah. Sorry, what are material icons? Is this just the icon set? Or... Yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the mat um, icons for material for material design from Google. Google okay. releases a standard suite of material of the icons they use, and as SVG file de definitions, and you can use them freely. They have Apache 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 two license, so I think they can be safely used. And are we already using these, or are we planning to start using them? I'm I'm actually incorporating them. Into the, in the, they will be featured uh, for the first time in my PR. And yeah, I took some liberty to add some new stuff, and I, I was expecting the PR to have those discussions, and then I can dial it down and revert some stuff if the community also doesn't like those techniques. But, but yeah. But Oleg, please, uh, can you please point, point me to those tools that you just mentioned? Mm, yeah, I'll uh, put them to the SIG chat. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got a couple pretty straightforward slides here. Um, our last meeting due to the holidays was just around a month ago. So there are a lot of repeat slides in this deck from that one in case anyone needs to needs or wants to go back to check them out. Uh, naturally, I will link to this uh, slide deck in Slack uh, after the call. So there's some housekeeping stuff that we don't need to run through again, I don't think, but sort of what's the intent behind this document? Uh, What's the intent behind the visual refresh, evolving the Jenkins brand, uh, focus on visual accessibility, and long-term, wanting to work toward a Jenkins design system. Um, so like I said, we don't need to read that all word for word. Uh, we can take a look at some mocks here. And uh, because we had that update from Felix, this is essentially what you've already seen. Um, there might be slight discrepancies between uh, what he's working on and what I have in these mocks, and that's because uh, since the holidays, we've already been kind of talking back and forth and improving things on his end that the design mocks just haven't caught up to yet. So there might be some discrepancies, but essentially uh, we can run through the updates real quickly. So this is sort of repeating, but functionality will remain the same as the goal. Uh, and we're going to start introducing this new color pilot and modern iconography. We wanted to start with the header bar for these reasons. In additional details on the screen, I don't think we need to run through all of it. So. Go to this next one. Uh, changes since the previous meeting. 
stuff that you've probably observed already, UI palette has been adjusted. It actually looks pretty different from the, from the previous iteration uh, you might have noticed. Uh, it's got greater visual contrast. Uh, as Felix mentioned, we've committed to material design icons uh, because they're easier for implementation and uh, they also just uh, have their, excuse me, have their recognizability and, and are really easy to understand for a lot of people as they're used in a lot of different products. Uh, they're very accessible for, for third-party developers, for anybody who wants to, to contribute and use the same icon set, uh, so material icons. And that was also directly for some feedback uh, from Uli, so thank you. Um, search bar suggestions have that new treatment, improved eligibility there. Uh, we added labels back to those icons, um, small things like this. Uh, so we're getting very, very close on this one, I would say. And also Felix mentioned and showed there on screen, which is a lot better than this static mockup, um, having uh, design considerations and some graceful degradation for smaller screens. As I mentioned, like these mocks aren't actually caught up to what he's already developed. So um, that search would be hidden, for example, but you get the idea. Yeah, uh, if I may point something about graceful degradation, also, um, we want to keep, um, it's not realistic to expect that all the, everything will look the same in all browsers, right? Uh, but we also don't want to be limited by browsers. That, or from, for, for example, we don't want to be limited by CSS properties for browsers not having CSS properties right now that they will eventually have. An example for this is a really small example uh, for a technique, technique that we will be using in the future is that you'll see this nice diagonal bar on the head Jenkins logo, for example. Yeah, where the logo is. It has a diagonal border, right? So that uses, that's done an easy way using a CSS property. So on browsers that do not support it, it's just a normal rectangular box. Uh, but browsers that do support this nice visual effect and this nice visual property, they have the updated. Uh, they have the updated basically styles. And the other browsers will eventually catch up. This is really a really small example and maybe not the best example, but that's something we will, um, I want to make it a point that this is something that we will probably be doing, which is making sure everything looks great on most modern browsers and the others will work uh, and eventually they will catch up. Yeah. One question about that. Uh, so mm -hmm. we updated uh, the browser support policy in December. Um, taking uh, the current uh, support policy, do you foresee any breaking changes? Uh, so if something doesn't work, like uh, this uh, CSS property is perfectly fine. No, no yeah, actually, I, I just thought, um, I just tested today on Internet Explorer 11 and everything worked except the icons, but I added a polyfill for the icons. So mm -hmm. they work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, the final thing I had for, for today was just sort of to give an idea of what we're gonna be thinking about next. Um, so up next on the list here as we uh, finesse the header bar. Um, now, keep in mind that I typed this out before we actually met today, of course. So we will, I will follow up in Slack about that idea of providing some uh, some full screen mockups and we'll figure out where to, to meet on that, Oleg. Um, uh -huh. But prior to that bit of discussion, here's what is on the docket, is admin monitor warnings um, as, as a type of component. And of course they will go and go ahead and inform other styles throughout the interface like buttons and, and other possibly form elements and things like that. And then a little more broad, Jenkins typography, um, a lot more broad actually. So I uh, feel that it really deserves um, dedicated consideration, right? So obviously there are huge implications with something as simply stated as Jenkins typography. Um, and I don't have a, a lot of my, my exact thoughts uh, worked out on that just yet, but in the next SIG meeting, I'd like to share some ideas and more specific proposals on how possibly it can be improved to, uh, to improve accessibility and uh, and, and that, of course, goes here right hand in hand with functionality. But these are two things we'll talk about two weeks from today in the next SIG call. And I wanted to mention them in case you want to talk about them in Slack leading up to that or right now. Totally fine. Any questions there? 
maybe talk a bit more about your plans for typography. Um, I mean, admin monitor warning sounds pretty obvious. I mean, the typography. It's, uh, so, so where I have to start is is kind of doing a, a bit of an audit. Audit might be too strong a word, but sort of a bit of an audit to see where things stand right now. Um, I don't want to say we want to improve consistency in the typography throughout Jenkins because I don't think it would be fair to say that it's inconsistent right now. I just know that there's probably room for improvement. Uh, that certain places, things need to be larger. Um, how we treat labels, um, what's most readable uh, in, in paragraph format, and uh, just, just a lot of different considerations. Font choice, of course, is a big one. Um, do we need to change it? Is that something we should be talking about? So a lot of question marks here for the moment, but because type touches so much of the experience, this is something I'd like for us to think about very soon. So we'll right. talk about this in the next one more. Nothing too specific yet. So we're gonna move to Comic Sans. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> we're doing Comic Sans across the board, 32 points. Yep. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, apart from the type itself, it's also about font sizes, uh, because yeah, font sizes is a pretty uh, pressing, pressing topic uh, on Jenkins. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And can you elaborate why it is? I mean, I'm sure everybody can guess, but have you got? Uh, well, I, I, for example, even if you just open uh, the previous interface shared by Felix, etc., we get a lot of feedback that fonts are just too small by default. Yeah. And when you start scrolling in, eventually your panels go in different directions. Yeah. Uh, for example, it's even extremely difficult uh, to just present the Jenkins, for example, if you, during the talk. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, well, you know, with the current layout, with the current fonts, you either don't see fonts or the layout just falls apart on the projector. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if it's a part of typography research, I'm definitely plus one uh, for doing something about it. Mm. Oh yeah, font selection and, and size, absolutely part of this. Mm. And that's it for now. Uh, just a quick reminder here about providing feedback. Obviously we have our Slack channel. You no longer have to email me. We found a way to set, set up a direct link, thank goodness. So just click on that if you want to go and join if, if anyone here isn't already in there. I think we all are. Got a comment here. Oh yeah, that's true. It was a great point. All like, yeah, for well, demos and whatnot. Yeah, we do a lot of demos and uh, they're essential to promote the Jenkins at conference talks. And I sure. assure you that uh, uh, demoing can you think of Jenkins review yeah. is quite difficult nowadays. Yeah, great example. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. For this deck, for the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the agenda because I, I wanna remain mindful of the time here. We got a lot to go through. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Felix, did you wanna say anything more about release approach for this call? Sorry, I was muted. Um, um, we did talk about release <laughs> yeah. a lot already, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you're good. I just wanted to double check. I don't wanna uh, skip over. Yeah, something that, <clears throat> yeah, by the way, these changes, just to mention, these are relatively, I just found the only impact up to one plug, one plugin that I think of, which is the warning NG. But yeah, Uli and I have been in contact a lot discussing how to solve this. So awesome. I'm sure it, yeah. will, it will eventually not be a problem. Yeah, one question. Um, would it make sense to start creating uh, Jira tickets uh, and maybe to create an epic for these uh, UI changes? Uh, because uh, yeah, if you want to have an incremental approach, uh, having uh, an epic and whatever in Jenkins Jira would help us uh, to see again what would be the plan. So even if some tickets are just ideas at the moment, by having uh, this yeah. list, uh, actually it could uh, help uh, to drive this discussion further. Yeah, that's something that I, I thought of yesterday and I forgot to add to the agenda. Thank you for mm -hmm. for bringing this up. Mm -hmm. I think it can be better, especially if the community has a reference to something that, I mean, it's, it's also just crude to to have an opaque discussion and then just create a PR, right? Maybe 
for the for other community people who who are not following the seek. So maybe it can also be a good idea to to create a ticket and have a yeah way to see an epic backlog to have more just tasks that are not only adding UI elements, maybe to report bugs that are specific for the redesign. Yeah, it can be a good idea. Yeah, it would be helpful and it could also help to facilitate changes. Because yeah, what we usually recommend is if you see that the ticket is new, differently, a market is that, and it's likely that you will get somebody working on that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether they would be new befriendly tickets right uh, at the moment, uh, but uh, still uh, just having it uh, publicly visible and traceable helps us uh, to get uh, more attention to the project. So this would be obviously Jira, so it's not in the cloud, it's Jira, but in the public Jenkins Jira. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. You're, you're aware of the public Jira, aren't you, Felix? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did raise a few, a bug or two, I think, and I yeah. need to raise another few or two. <laughs> and I, 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 I participated in a few tasks there. Yeah. So maybe oh, look, we can we we can talk offline how to maybe how to organize create an epic or something like that. Yeah, in Jenkins, we usually use use epics and use them as a grouping element uh, to group mega projects. So yeah, I know that's not how epics are supposed to be used, uh, but historically it's uh, the most uh, dominant kind in Jenkins Jira. Maybe we yeah. need to create a component or a project or something also. We could, but yeah, component unlikely. We have a Jenkins core and other components, for example, a warning SNG plugin. If you want uh, to do some uh, downstream changes uh, to mm -hmm. keep the things compatible, and epic is just a group I think, uh, thing for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Item number four. Uh, sorry, I'm just watching the clock here. Jeremy, did you want to speak about that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we, we need to kind of move towards having a fixed slot. We've been fairly ad hoc up until now. I think we've had a few different times. Um, but I mean, I think the two weekly cadence is about right. Obviously, Christmas, New Year came in between. Does anybody have an issue with it being at this time? Or should we make it earlier? Because I noticed in the Jenkins calendar, there is another meeting right now. The pipeline, uh, let me just get my calendar. Right, yeah. This. Yeah, I think for me it would be a little bit better if we can start one hour earlier. Earlier, okay. but the uh, not meeting one hour earlier. Uh, one hour earlier, we have for JSOC office hours, oh. which yeah. would be quite difficult to move. Okay, then it's okay. It's it's okay. For me, the Tuesdays are quite difficult at that time because mm -hmm. I have often work meetings that I really need to attend. So, I mean, I'm open to moving it to the Monday or. Friday, Mondays, Wednesday. Okay. For me, it's okay on this time as well. Yeah, this time works for me as well. All right, then. At least with this time, I mean, if somebody from California wants to join, they can join relatively easily. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're locking most Asians out unless they want to stay up very late. But yeah. Yeah, but. Um, in the worst case, it's possible to just uh, have another series of meetings. It's what we yeah. tried to do in JSOC and then focus in outreach uh, for yeah. our region and Europe have an early meeting. So we yeah. have to have two time slots. Yeah, it's also uh, mm -hmm. possible. Um, so we're agreeing now that the meeting is going to be at 5 p.m. European. I think we're all in the European time zone, aren't we, pretty much? Yeah, so 5 p.m. CET, I think everybody on this call is, except Tim, you're in the UK, aren't you? Yeah, UK. Yeah, so 4 p.m. UK. Okay, next week I'm not going to be able to, I mean, in two weeks' time I won't be able to attend, but I'll make sure that uh, somebody takes over for me. And, uh, okay, so that's point is agreed. Um, Oleg, point five. All right. So, yeah, it won't take much time. 
Yeah. So actually, uh, my proposal would be uh, so one of another reasons why I was talking about mockups for the entire UI. Uh, maybe it's time to start uh, facilitating in the community and creating some bars uh, for the Jenkins UX seek. So once uh, something could be presented, it would be great to have a blog post on Jenkins IO and maybe to use other channels to highlight these activities. Because yeah, UX is uh, on the top uh, of our list in terms of user feedback. So if we just show that uh, there are some things happening in this area, we can uh, probably attract more contributors. We could attract uh, uh, just more users providing feedback about the UI and what needs to be changed. So my proposal to seek leaders would be to actually have an announce once, um, once you're ready. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to have a blog post. And obviously, I think it would be good for the blog post to have some kind of collateral, like an image that shows, you know, mm -hmm. where we think it's heading, because that's obviously what gets people. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fine. Reading about UX is boring if it doesn't have you know, graphics. So, let's go <laughs> wrong with it. Well, it, uh, so even uh, the first meeting, so there was uh, this three-phase uh, uh, project plan. Even yeah. that uh, already looks uh, interesting and something to be shared because yeah, you can definitely get a lot of feedback for second and third phase. Yeah. But yeah, if it's a company uh, with uh, some UI sketches, yeah, I think it would be great. Yeah. So let's see. What do we want to have in the blog post? Obviously, we're going to talk about a little bit about the SIG, but the SIG is not really what the blog post is about. It's more that we're planning a new UX. I think that uh, whatever is interesting to users. Mm. So uh, we had some announcements for SIGs before, but usually it's either manifesto of a special interest group. Mm. So what we want to do, why we invite people, how to provide feedback, how to contact us, or maybe some highlights for project activities. So for example, for platform SIG, we start from Java 11 right away. And I guess we have never formally announced this special interest group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, this is something I'm happy to take the lead on. Mm -hmm. It will probably take a week or two before I can get it all done. But uh, well, mm -hmm. I guess it also depends on some mock-ups. Yeah, we, like I said, I'll follow up in Slack about um, about what we can do there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it'll be a little while, a couple, a week or two, as you said. Mm -hmm. And then item number six, Oleg. Oh, yeah, it's uh, the same uh, topic, basically. Uh, so if uh, there are SIG members who are going uh, to FOSDOM, we have a contributor summit on January 31st, and it could be uh, an opportunity to have some UX-related discussions. So if there is a critical mass of people who are interested to, work, uh, to talk about this topic, it could be an opportunity to meet face-to-face. Uh, -face. Yeah. Might be so nice for Felix to consider. Um, uh -huh. um, yeah, well, and obviously everybody's welcome, but I mean, Felix, does, uh, do you know what Fostem is? Not really, no. I Maybe suppose Alec can uh, give the one minute uh, or 30 seconds. Well, talk. just uh, the biggest open source conference in Europe. Okay. It's, it's enough. <laughs> Well, uh, it's really big. It's more than 10,000 people coming. It's a two-day event on the weekend. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things going on. For example, Jenkins will have a stand today. Um, and uh, there was a CICD room being led by Olivier Vernier. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and in addition to that, uh, communities have organized various meetings uh, around FOSDOM because a lot of people go to there anyway. And for us, we do um, uh, the Contributor Summit on the 31st of January. Um, who's who's uh, you like me to prepare some materials or I can generate a... Mm -hmm. I actually was going to release a Docker image with a new UI, real with, with the new changes, so mm -hmm. you can try them. Uh, so it's not uh, something uh, for planning, etc., but it's rather for discussion. 
So for phase one, I believe, uh, yeah, phase one is more or less discussed, but uh, next phases, like which frameworks to use, what would be oh, the yeah. roadmap for that, it could be a good venue for such kind of discussions. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah those will be lengthy discussions and heavy research involved. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yes, just uh, an opportunity, and I believe there will be more events uh, later this year. So there will be DevOps World in Las Vegas, then in Prague. Uh, so if uh, the project, uh, um, if uh, we have planning and design work at that time, it could be even a better opportunity because there will be more people there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. So I just referenced to this item. So if anybody goes, we can use it. And I think that is it for our mm -hmm. items for today. Thank you, Jeremy, for the notes. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Unless anybody else has anything they would like to talk about, otherwise we can uh, call it a day. Oh, yeah, just thanks a lot for doing that. Thank you. Thank you everybody for the feedback. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so. All. all right, thanks, Tim, for joining. Thanks, everybody. Good evening. Bye. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Good morning and good evening. Bye.